Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. Nuclear, gas, oil, and coal proponents claim that the sun doesn't shine at night and therefore a renewable electric grid is impossible. These same people and corporations are wedded to an old power industry paradigm that asserts that it's possible to safely store the most hazardous radioactive substance known to man for a quarter of a million years. Uh, this is probably the most dangerous stuff on the planet ever. Uh, very, very small quantities of this waste. Um, and it's been said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. If Even the amount that would fit on the leg of a fruit fly uh, is considered a problem dose. And that's happened at Hanford. Fruit flies have landed on contaminated materials and then flown off to go to the lunchroom and deposit contamination on food and on tables and whatnot. And they've had to evacuate a 20 acre area at the Hanford site because of uh, hot fruit flies and wasps. So this, this waste in these tanks is very dangerous in small quantities. And it has another feature, which is it's dangerous for very, very long periods of time. I'm a nuclear engineer. I was a reactor physics instructor and directed nuclear power plant decommissioning for a quarter of a million years. I know this sounds incredible to people, but there are 40 miles of unlined trenches at Hanford, if you stretch them end to end, into which our federal government, your government, was dumping radioactive waste from nuclear weapons production and its own reactors until the year 2004 when we put those pictures um, on air and in our campaign literature for Initiative 297. Um, it's been against the law for decades for a municipal government to dump un in municipal garbage in unlined landfills, but our federal government thinks it's okay for radioactive waste, even though it seeps right out of those trenches, and, and that stuff is all moving through the soil to the Columbia River. Well, I contend that if scientists can safely store toxic nuclear material for thousands and thousands of years, Cellfield, England, there's 8 million liters a day pouring into that ocean. 8 million liters a day. And what that does is it gets out into the currents and it travels and radiates everything. For thousands and thousands of years. It's so toxic that they have to shoot seagulls if they land there because they become radioactive. It's so toxic that the wind blowing over it for thousands and thousands of years becomes contaminated. It's so toxic because you can never ever stop this. You can never turn this off. It's going to take approximately 20 years at 80 transport trucks a day to clean that site up. Think of each one of these bullets as dirty bombs. Every one of these things are dirty bombs. Your loved ones are going over to foreign countries and whacking that country with dirty bombs. Millions and millions and millions of dirty bombs. I mean, there's 1.1 billion tons of depleted uranium in America right now that they got to get rid of. And this is the way they're getting rid of it. They're hurling it all around the world. And they're coming home and having deformed kids because they were so close to those dirty bombs. Think of Hanford. Billions of gallons dumped on the ground. It's demonizing everybody over cardboard and tin cans and plastic. The right thing to do. Or is it to go after this real issue? Instead of spending $2 billion a day on the military industrial machine, spend $2 billion a day on cleaning this up, and it'll all be gone in no time. It could be all gone in no time. It's that simple. We just can't get ourselves out of this rah, rah, rah nationalism where you just got to go along to get along. Well, I contend if scientists can safely store toxic nuclear material for thousands and thousands of years, and if environmentalists think stopping tin cans and pop bottles and fucking plastic is going to save the planet, they're so fucking lost in the game. They're so lost. We haven't got a hope in hell. We have to have this message out there somehow. Somebody has to do this. And I don't know who that is. I won't hear an environmentalist calling out to tell you mafia when 600 barrels of nuclear waste washed up on the Somalian coastline. Oh no, but they want to murder you, they want to kill you. If you don't recycle your pop bottles. I hear environmentalist UT professors calling for the murder of 90% of the people on this planet 
Yet 16 container ships produce more pollution than all the automobiles on this planet combined. And there's 90,000 of those ships out there. You want to hear an environmentalist calling out their own government when 47,000 barrels are dumped 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco. But they want to have war crimes tribunal for you if you don't recycle your plastic. See an environmentalist calling out the Soviets for 17,000 containers of radioactive waste or 19 ships containing radioactive waste or 14 nuclear reactors with nuclear fuel. No, but I see them want to genetically alter your children. I see them want to blow your children up. And there's no... Philip and Tracy. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Your own choice. Okay, class, thank you so much for today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, just before you go, I just need to press this little button here. Now, everybody, please remember to read chapters 5 and 6 on volcanoes and glaciation. Except for Philip and Tracy, of course. I'm Arnie Gunderson. For thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of years, I'll keep you informed.